Okay guys, so welcome to another analysis of mine. I, because of the popularity of the last craft of writing analysis that I did, I thought I might do one more for you, but this time I am going to actually do a text that is on the prescribed list for standard. So the text that I'm going to do is Les Murray's An Absolutely Ordinary Rainbow. So let me just um, get to the text in a minute. But, bef but before I do that, I thought that I might... Um, I'm going to ad-lib this one, so I'm not going to have too many notes in front of me. I'm just going to have, have the poem in front of me. I'm just going to flick through a few of the stanzas. I might go back and forth a bit, but I just want to do this ad-lib and just, um, just point out a few interesting facts for you. So here we go. The human condition is something that you're actually looking at in this particular text. So just have that concept in mind when you think about the poet, his experiences living by himself or with one family member after one passed away in a remote rural area and the difficult times he had to undergo and then coming to the University of Sydney where he studied. All of these things have an influence in the way this particular poet writes. So just keep that in the back of your mind anyway. Okay, the human condition encompasses all aspects of life, including emotions, relationships, and how the external environment can impinge upon thoughts, values, and beliefs. Though these aspects represent the experience of being human in all people, they are unique to and vary with each individual. Different people will inevitably undergo both positive and negative experiences in their lives, Composers have used a variety of visual and literary techniques to demonstrate contrasting, contrasting experiences that humans undergo. The comments made by Murray in An Absolutely Ordinary Rainbow reflect a distorted society where feelings and emotions are kept secret and dark fears and worries remain embedded deep within individuals. You see, when I look at this text... I see that weeping is a bittersweet emotion, but the rewards of inner peace through the release of grief and sorrow outweigh the pains of weeping. While the man cries out with grief and sorrow, it is a gift to weep because it brings peace. People are shown as being so obsessed with fitting in the unfeeling social mainstream that society can be just so difficult at times and so unforgiving if, if I could say that and they became and they become afraid of change in many ways the poem points out that people have become less dignified because they no longer openly express their feelings and attitudes so these are some of the things that I want you to remember when you think about this okay so I'm actually now going to talk about the first stanza of the text. So if I was to um, look at stanza one, you, I'm just going to look at the text right here because I'm doing this ad lib as I told you. Um, if you look at those three references, Repens, Lorenzini's and the Tattersall's Club, you see this particular technique of referencing is really important when analyzing this text. People just think, oh, this is referencing. No, but this is the setting, guys. And you must understand that when you, when you talk about the setting, it's just more than painting a picture or, you know, for the responder. It, go, it delves a little bit deeper than that. So some of you, this, the reference to Tattersall's might go over your head, and I don't blame you because it's a, quite an old club down in Pitt Street. I still don't know if it exists. I know that when I went to Sydney Uni, I too must like the... The, the character in this particular text would walk walk through the city a lot and I remember the Tattersall's Club what I know of it and I always think it's a wonderful place and I'm not going to say anything bad about it but at the time it was a club strictly for men and very rich men so in this instance this plays right in to the poet's view of a distorted society where men were seen as strong powerful almost above societal realms, realms, if I could say that. So a man crying in a corner of the most powerful street in Sydney paints a very 
confronting and interesting picture. And I think that many kids today would not really understand how influential that picture that, that it was when, when it was painted, so to speak, as a piece of poetry, what it would actually have said and what it would, it would actually have meant. So the fact that through referencing, Murray enables a responder to get a good understanding of what city or what the city of Sydney was like in the 1960s. Okay, so that's a really important stanza to focus on. Now, let me just um, scroll down to the next stanza, if I can. Just at living here. Okay, so if you look at the first two, before I go there, actually, if you look at the first two lines of stanza number one again, there is the referencing device, right? And through a few lines, you can clearly see there's also a symbolic value to the word tattersalls because it is so influential at the time for men to join this club. And that has almost a juxtaposing effect with the man crying. That's why the atmosphere has to be made that way, has to be built up that way, has to be created that way. So, you know, you're going on a journey through Pitt Street and seeing this distorted society and seeing Reppin's, Lorenzini, Lorenzini's very famous cafes, and then you see Tattersall's, that is sort of the hallmark of men. And then you're confronted with the weeping man. And that, you know, the craft of writing is illuminated at this point. It really is because you are confronted with this image of powerful men and suddenly there's this man who's supposed to be weak but the responder has to stop and think for a minute hang on a second we need to change something here it's not it's not weak to cry and then of course through his writing i'm just going to go back to the poem for a minute i'm just going to go back to the poem for a minute i'm just going to scroll up to the third stanza perfect right there yeah so if i'm looking at the third stanza i'll just read a few lines to you for a minute here give me a second um the traffic in george street is banked up for a mile and drained of motion the crowds are edgy with talk and more crowds come hurrying many run in the back streets which minutes ago were busy main streets pointing there's a fellow weeping down there but no one can stop him the man we surround, the man no one approaches, simply weeps and does not cover it. Weeps not like a child, not like the wind, like a man. That's very important. That point is superfluous to me because it is he validates a man crying, not like a child, not like the wind, like a man. And in this instance, says to his responders, if you have to cry, you cry because it is a beautiful rainbow. And that is where the title comes in. Ra rainbows aren't ordinary, they are beautiful. But the fact that crying is an ordinary act of life, and thus the title, an absolutely ordinary rainbow. At this point, the man goes through a release. His pain, his suffering might not be gone, but it's a it is a control mechanism to get him through a difficult time. If you do some extra study, go and learn about Les Murray, learn about his life, and you might see that a lot of this, this persona that he talks about in his poem could, could potentially be him. And that's why this is such an amazing poem for the craft of writing. Because through the craft of writing, Les Murray enables the reader of his poem to get a better understanding of humanity, where we are, where we were, and where we are going. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you do want to make a few comments, please do. Even better, if you want me to analyze something for you, leave a comment and I will try to analyze it for you. What I will do, what I will say is that if you give me a, like a novel, I probably can't do that because it's a long text, I've got to read it. I've got classes to teach. But if you give me a poem or give me maybe even a film, I certainly could have a go for you if you know no one else does and you're one of the few that does comment. 
I could probably analyze it for you. So leave a comment. Let me know what you think. If there's anything more you'd like me to do, I'll try and analyze it for you. So have a great day and that's it. Thanks, bye.